think if everybody can have AI as a companion to create something, then you have more time for creativity. We need to focus more and more on the human skills because that's the differentiator mm. in a future professional because AI will make more or less everybody a good designer or everybody a good maybe uh, AdWords campaign builder. What do you recommend companies to facilitate that personal growth? So, so for me, as Princess Sneakers, we, we value learning a lot and we try to facilitate it in all sorts of ways. What do you see are, are critical success factors for entrepreneurs or environments to create that learning environment, to really learn people how to learn? There was one time at Trinity, and he did an amazing job as a company because he applied all those knowledge directly towards the company. I think companies need to redefine growth on the people side and the professionals more facilitate growth or support growth or give trust. Mm. The best thing you can do is give them trust and an opportunity and they will they will go welcome to the redefine growth podcast today we're going to talk about the skills of the future talent acquisition retaining them and training them so stay tuned for this one i hope you like it on the 30th of august we're back again at thuis half with the sprint and sneakers festival we got the ex-general manager of uber we got an ai expert from google and we're going to talk about what we can learn from these big giants uh, as an impact company to grow our company as fast as they do. So stay tuned for tickets, sign up our website, and I hope to see you then. So welcome to another episode of the Redefined Growth Podcast. Today we got Roderick Hageman. He's one of the founders, I think, of the Talent Institute, an expert on uh, the talent uh, development, talent acquisition maybe also? Both, I think. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, today, so what do you need to do to uh, attract talent, to uh, train talent, and to retain talent? I think it's uh, kind of the summary we're going to talk about today. I'm super excited to find out more. Um, maybe you have something to add to the introduction, Rodrik? No, I think it's a clear uh, thing to three things, attract, develop, and retain. I think important Good. topic. Nice. So uh, what made you start the Talent Institute? Ooh, yeah, I think I didn't really had a passion for talent development when I was born, but I do think it's, I think, a little bit in line with my professional journey. I had two companies before, hmm. quite focused on tech and digital. It was a comparison website for um, insurances. And I think there I was a little bit frustrated that I couldn't build my things myself, um, especially when we were an online platform. Um, on the other hand, finding the right people was also frustrating. Uh, and we didn't have a lot of money in at that moment. So we had to find graduates who were eager to maybe be our marketer or our developer, but then you mm -hmm. didn't have the right skills. Um, so when I sold that business, I thought it was, I think, a logical step. I rolled into a little bit into it saying, hey, we can't find the right people, let's at least create them. And I think that was a little bit the start of the Talent Institute. Just an ambition saying, what if we could create the future professional? Hmm. And that was the starting point. And from there on, it evolved in first training, then development, then ac more or less recruitment, um, till it evolved right now in a talent development company. How long ago was that? When did you start? We started in 2016 with our first growth hacking traineeship. Mm. Um, I had no clue what growth hacking was in that day. Uh, I think it was just arrived here in the Netherlands, the word growth hacking. And then at one point, um, it was still when there was a lot of youth unemployment. And then mm. uh, we were in the building B Amsterdam and the founder of that building came to me saying, hey, we need to find talent for our startups, for our skill ups, and you're going to be a talent development company. Shall we start a growth hacking traineeship? So in 2016, we started our first traineeship program where we, yeah, unemployed young professionals. Now you can't really imagine that, but uh, mm. unemployed young professionals, we said, all right, can we turn them around into full stack growth hackers in six months? That was the start. Yeah. Um, and now, eight years later, 800 alumni uh, along the way. Uh, we are still doing quite the same, developing mm. talent. Nice. And is that now, um, first of all, I'm very happy that you exist because... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think you have four people, right? Four uh, alumni? I guess way more nowadays. Yeah? Well, at least we had way more. So uh, I think we're now with 40 people, but I think at least 
we hired at least 10 of the people that I think uh, so. That's, good, a, that's a good score. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I'm very happy that you uh, developed the, the talent that we're, we're looking for. And I, I guess with me, it's a lot of other companies. So uh, a good thing there. So it started as a traineeship in growth hacking. So where did, did it develop uh, to? Yeah, so first we were also a training company. So hmm. we said, all right, hey, what we need more people with digital skills. Let's make sure. And we didn't have literally like every startup. You just start trying things out. Um, so we started directly with the traineeship, but we also started training companies in digital skills, digital marketing skills, growth hacking, innovation. We started boot camps. I think in two years later, we saw that the traineeship was a really success. And uh, we saw that those young professionals really um, started growing into their careers. And we thought, all right, here we have something. Um, on the training part, we noticed that, yeah, really great. You give a two-day workshop growth hacking to someone, mm. but if you don't practice growth hacking in your work, then you will forget it um, after a while. So at one point in 2017, uh, also corporates came to us saying, hey, we need this new generation professionals. We started into providing them also with young professionals. And at that point, I think in 2017, we said, all right, we stop as a training company. We only, we really become a true talent development company. And as you said in your introduction, the, our talent development part is focused on finding the right talent mm. that have the potential to become a good digital professional, give them a working opportunity with one of our partner companies and develop them. And that mix of three I believe that that is the true power of what we are doing, but also the true power of talent development. Mm. If you do only one or only two, then it's always, yeah, an, an lack of potential um, and result. Yeah, and I think it's aligned with the, the 70 20 10 rule that they often talk about that 70% you learn on the job, 20% from repairs, and 10% via yeah. training. So I think that your model uh, grabs, grabs a lot I of those. I think we try to, it's not that we build our program around that, but I do mm. believe that that is the case. So for example, within our traineeship that we had for growth hacking, mm. um, yes, we can say, hey, our training was very good and our development program was really good, but the yeah. true value lies in that we were able to partner up with companies, for example, with Sprints and Sneakers, saying, All right, hey, these companies there they can really apply it and that in combination with having a good and driven young professional with a development program that more or less really is the sweet spot yeah and also one of the good things that i see happening with the talent is that they also have a community so they also learn from each other if they're in a class and and and, and doing that training and workshops but then also stick within the community so i think that's also a, a nice part of the business that you that you create because a lot of people know each other from the yeah, talent institute and, and that is something that evolved over time. It mm. was not, not sp specifically what we really wanted to create, but at one point we noticed, hey, there are people had to gather an experience within a, mm. uh, a traineeship. Then yeah. they started working at different companies, but then people started recruiting their peers for other companies. And at one point I thought, all right, hey, this is also value yeah, yeah. Um, and sometimes the community it's always very intangible what the community means every mm -hmm. company wants to have a community but i think a community can really become a community if it creates value to the peers and sometimes we at talent institute doesn't have to do a lot for it we only have to facilitate it but i do think that the yeah the biggest value lies in yeah the interconnection between the peers and that they at least know all right hey these people have a certain mindset or at least a certain background, yeah. what relates to each other. If you haven't done so, please like and follow us on YouTube, Spotify, wherever you're listening. There's more exciting stuff to come. And you, you became one of the fastest growing company of the Netherlands, uh, I believe. Uh, Together with you. <laughs> yes, we're also... You won, you won that year. <laughs> yeah, 2022, we're, we're the fastest company of the West of the Netherlands. Yeah, so I wasn't even there because I didn't expect us to win. <laughs> so that was funny. But no, now I guess we're one of the thousand fastest companies. Uh, I'm, I think number 30 of the Netherlands. Uh, that's a good achievement, right? Can we yeah, get proud okay. of that? Uh, <laughs> but you too. So what, what is the... 
What is the success behind uh, the talent institute? Nothing. I think really delivering value in the gap there is between talent and companies. So mm. on the one hand, there are a lot of ambitious young professionals coming from universities, um, really want to succeed in their career, but the problem that they have is most of the times their skill set nowadays doesn't really directly fit to the roles that companies are looking for. So mm. on that point, we really try to understand what young professionals, graduates want, and we want to try to give them a career opportunity um, that fits their needs. So uh, in cultural values, in personal values, in development, in gaining experience. So that's what we try to, that gap, that's the gap that we want to try to fill for the young professionals. And on the other hand, for the company side, yeah, the war on talent is big, the mm. constantly changing world. And the need for skills is becoming more and more important. Um, so there's also a gap because they can't find the real, the right people. Um, so there's also a value that we're trying to bridge. And hmm. those two combined, that's, I think, the reason that we were able to grow as fast as we do. Hmm. Um, um, so it always lies in can you create value for your end user customer? Hmm. Um and that also needs to evolve every uh, time, right? Because we are in the game of digital talent. Mm. Um, and that's what we also need to evolve over time because growth hacking was very new at the beginning. And now some people hate that term or it evolved as well. Um, and you also need to constantly um, iterate on your own programming, your own propositions yeah. and the needs of the company, the needs of the young professionals. Um, I think, for example, we turn to become a B Corp. You also are a B Corp. Uh, yes. I think that's something what is really, yeah, evolved over time that mm. the need, especially when, if you want to attract young professionals, you need to become more aware of not only the growth of your company, uh, that's nice for a founder, but also the impact that you make as a company to society, to nature. And, and young professionals are really keen on that. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what we try to, focus on also in our proposition hmm. yeah i'm glad to hear that yeah <laughs> <When an entrepreneur laughs> but it goes, worked for you as well right b corp probably uh yeah because uh, but it's, more, it's, it's good to have the label to, yeah. to get com confirmation that you're doing the right thing but it's definitely one of the like offering people a purposeful job is uh is uh, i think the the way to go if you want to attract like the new generation of talent and uh, i think it's a really good thing that you do it yourself and m you may, might be also be capable of inspiring your partners uh, to to think of those kind of things because uh, only offering them a good salary and, and some benefits is uh, I don't think uh, uh, the way to go anymore. Uh, only that. So it's um, yeah, and it's still also a a journey. What you what everybody is exploring also nowadays, right? What what is the value that you deliver to your clients? But it's also the impact that you try to make as a company. Um, how can you combine those? Mm -hmm. um, I think that's really the challenge for every company. And I do think that if you are a company working with a lot of young people, you are a little bit in an advantage because mm. you have intrinsically motivated people in your company working yep. to succeed in that challenge. Yeah. And one of the things I, I, I um, see as an opportunity for entrepreneurs, we call that the Impact North Star. You're probably familiar with yeah. the North Star metric within the growth. We call it the Impact North Star. So if you, for example, a Mela from the Good Role, um, uh, with the toilet paper, so for uh, they they donate fifty, they use fifty percent um, uh, of their profit to realize uh, uh, senator uh, toilets, etc. Yeah. In Africa, so it's the more they grow, the bigger the impact is. So if you connect the two, the two, like if you connect the impact to uh, with the revenue, it's okay to focus on growth, and it goes hand in hand, and 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 it's it's not even that hard to to come up with a metric like that you know as long as you try to do something and and connect it with uh, the because if you most of the entrepreneurs that you ask they they know what revenue they want to do they, they know how, how how fast they want to grow but just connect something to that so it goes it always go ha goes hand in hand i think that's where a lot of entrepreneurs can learn from so i'm really glad to hear that you're moving B Corp. Are you already B Corp? Yeah, we are. We oh, are. Congrats. I yeah. think when you probably launched it, then we also announced it uh, to the world. But last month we became a B Corp. Hmm. 
All right. Yeah. So, so you're not alone anymore. <laughs> ah, no, that's good. I'm happy to see that. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, I think so. it's good that more and more companies, and I think talking about the topic of talent, mm. it becomes more and more important um, yeah. as a company that you are aware of what you, what your role is, is in within society, um, not only on your growth and profitability, but also on your impact. Yeah. Um, and you will attract talent with it. Yeah, and a good thing, what I like about also when, when you meet entrepreneurs that have that, that similar vision, like we, we once gave a presentation to uh, about 100 other agencies and we, we said to them, like, you all have to become a B Corp. You all have to inspire your partners or clients uh, to make a positive impact and, and set goals on the impact that you want to make and, and maybe even work only for impact companies. While that might be my some sort of competitive advantage, uh, for a long time, like I'd rather have them all becoming B Corp and make that impact than me having like sort of a uh, an, an, a competitive advantage because I don't care. Like I'll, I'll I'll need other things to be competitive and to be really good at what we do. For me, it's way more important that we all have that similar vision and inspire these companies to do good. And and the good thing about these things is that it, that you can track talent and uh, and also I think offer them a purposeful job. Like they wake up in the morning for like, hey, you know, this is actually. The, the things that I do, they uh, are useful. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I so completely it's... agree. You see it already. And I think it also gives energy. For, uh, sure. For sure. Between the companies, um, you're working on something bigger and that, yeah, mm. it um, yeah it gives energy. Yeah. Hey, what is your vision? Like if I look on LinkedIn, so um, there's a lot of uh, uh, Stanford, uh, uh, like all sorts of universities giving away a lot of their courses. Uh, there's a lot of free content coming. I think LinkedIn in general is developing more and more as a platform where you can find a lot of valuable content, valuable things. Uh, on the other hand, you also see a lot of... Uh, um, solopreneurs uh, that develop their own course and uh, have all sorts of <laughs> dropshipping drop for example <laughs> <laughs> you see them all forms and shapes you um, can become rich now in yeah 10 yeah, days. yeah they only got rich by that course but it's uh, <laughs> um what, what is your vision on that development uh, also with ai of, of course right so it's what is your vision on the, the the developments you see in the market in terms of uh, personal growth uh, talent development uh, i think so all those developments are great, right? Um, and that directly starts a discussion, all right? What should you do as a professional right now? Should mm. you still go to university or would you say, fuck off, I'm going to only do online courses from Harvard mm. or I'm going to teach it myself? So it directly starts some kind of a discussion. What I've learned over the time, and I'm not sure if you feel the same, um, doing online courses and motivating yourself to follow all those online courses is freaking hard. Mm. Um, also sometimes because you're missing a little bit of context. Um, so I believe in online courses. I also believe in all the um, knowledge that is available online. Um, do you really want to make it an advantage for your professional career? It helps if someone gives you a little bit of context. So when we start a talent development program and the young professionals will join us. I always say everything what you will learn with me, you can find also on the internet for free and maybe even better if you start digging a little bit. Mm. The only value that I'm going to give you is I'm going to present it you in the right order. I know what you need to learn um, and I do it within the context that you can also apply it at one of the companies that you're going to work for. Yeah, and I think that is the real value mm that sometimes is missing in this whole world of all available content, right? You need some kind of support and guidance saying, all right, hey, if you want to learn this or you want to grow towards this position, start learning this course, start uh, following that person on X or follow this YouTube uh, video. So I think, so the good thing is there's a lot and that's also on the other hand, directly the bad thing. Um, and, um, but some people are really motivated to start just digging, watching everything. Mm -hmm. But most of the people can have some guidance and that's what we try to do, for example. So if you follow talent development program with us, we also work with companies from the US um, who provide great online content because we believe that's the best content. But we also try to structure it a little bit. Mm. Um, following the topic of AI, 
that's opening up a whole new world what is even um yeah also putting pressure on what we are doing right what does this mean for the professional right yeah um and the bigger thing there is maybe that you don't even have to learn it anymore to for example if you want to become a designer you need to learn figma and then you're going to watch videos how you're going to work in layers for figma but yeah. now with AI, you just say, hey, what, I, what you want in Figma is going to create it. Mm. So it opens up a completely new skill set that you need to start learning on how to use AI to become a professional you want to be. So it's it's going to be a switch also there. So not from only online content, it's going to be more or less some kind of a co-teacher, co-coach, co-creator mm. next to you as a professional. So yeah. Um, it's going to be quite an interesting time and I think there's going to be a big paradigm shift within the professional. And I, the good thing for us is I believe that the young professional, the starter, is in the perfect position to be become a front runner in this new age of AI and professional skills. Yeah, I think in a couple of generations, they don't even know any better that they have like an assistant for everything, right? They have their AI financial advisor, they have their AI personal coach, they have their AI uh, designer assistant. And I remember when I was when I was younger, I used to play drums and played in a couple of bands. And then I started DJing and, and I really wanted to produce my own music. Like I had all these kind of music things in my head, but I could never transform that into what I was uh, in, in a program. Because just I had to, I, I never could it out of my get it out of my fingers, right? So what I had in my head, and now like I saw this video of Alexander Clipping this morning on his LinkedIn, is you can just With explain music. what you're lo yeah. looking for, and and AI will create that music for you, right? So you don't have any like I used to work with Ableton and all these programs, you don't need them anymore. Like you can just maybe even whistle like the music that and and the tones and and explain what you're looking for. So I, I totally agree. This uh, and I think also. What, the, what makes me curious at the moment is there was a very big hype at the end of 2023 about, all right, this is AI. And mm. still, I think I'm still hyped up about the whole topic. Mm. Um, but you see now it's a little bit decreasing and everybody's saying, hey, I tried it out. doesn't really work. doesn't give the answers that I want. And yeah. um, so I stopped using it. Yeah, yeah. Um, I noticed it. Uh, in also in work that a lot of people tried it find it amazing mm. but it didn't work perfectly and then they stopped working with it yeah. but what we at the Talent Institute really believe say alright this is gonna be this, this is going to be a paradigm shift and this mm. is going to change the future professional so you need to start if you want to have a competitive edge you need to start today with understanding it learning it so internally we are really trying everything we can do to just start understanding it it doesn't work perfectly or trying things out but it is going to change the way we work um, and it's also going to create a lot of new opportunities how i don't know yet but um it feels like some kind of a exciting new time um, yeah. and i said also to the people that joined our program i said hey guys you are now you have these kind of i gave a presentation about ai a while ago to some professionals and i compared ai to an industrial revolution. Um, mm -hmm. And I said, right, hey, maybe this is your time uh, to ride that wave. For example, I was too young for the uh, internet uh, oh, wow. wave yeah. in the bit bubble, but I thought, right, hey, what is the best time to pick up a wave of a whole new switch? I think it is between 20 year old and 30 year old, right? You don't yeah. have a lot of responsibilities. You are not stuck to the old system. So I said to all the people who are now young, start riding this wave because this is your competitive edge and this is going to be a jump start in your career. Um, so it's, a, I think, a real motivation to all young professionals to start picking this up because I do th really believe that you have an opportunity that you only get maybe once or two times in your career. Yeah. Um, and that's going to be an interesting while, but but how it will look like and how I think nobody knows yet. Uh, I think it's also hard to imagine because it's going so fast. Like it's the developments you see right now already, like uh, it's we're not talking about years. It's about more about months, weeks and days, how it becomes better, better and better. And and I I totally see what, what you're saying that when I do a keynote, I often ask people that whoever used ChatGPT and then you see all hands going up. 
and I ask who, who used it last week, and then okay, half the the, the room uh, lowers their hands, and then who used it today, and then only a few will s still keep their and hand up. And if you ask those people what do you do, probably will say edit and copy for an email or something. And I yeah. think if you really stop saying right, I said to internally to our companies, right, hey, we need to go beyond editing text or improving your email towards a client with JetGPT. We need to really start using AI into um, data analysis. Or mm. for example, if you are a marketeer, how can you make an analysis with JetGPT? Or are you an innovation pro uh, professional? How can you um, analyze um, uh, interview results? These kind of things. How, how can you use AI for that? And that's, I think, where the value lies for the professional, but also for the company. Yeah. Um, and, but that's a process of iterating, testing. And I think this is also where development is going a little bit, trying things out with some kind of a assistant next to you. Yeah, for sure. Because, uh, you, well, you see the development, I think, uh, uh, AI beat the world champion in chess already in 1997. Uh, and, and, and then it became like a bachelor level uh, employee. And now it already beats all the tests at Google uh, uh, that typically people have to make that are earning like 300K. So it's, it's becoming better, better, smarter and smarter. And, and uh, when writing code and all these areas, I think, uh, I think that's all going to change. And the, the, the cool thing there is, I believe it's gonna make us more human. Um, so the human skills are becoming more and more important. So um, look at maybe uh, the work that your people are doing within um, marketing. Mm. If they can get support in making campaigns or making a data analysis, then you have more time for creativity. Uh, you have more time for making even if you can get assistance in creation then you have you can create thousand things instead of two and hmm. um, so it makes i believe that we will need to focus on creativity uh, as well as human skills because i think if everybody can have ai as a companion to create something a data analysis then your skill is not being good at data analytics anymore your yeah. skill is how good can you present the results? And that's a human skill. Or how good are you in convincing your peers or your client that your solution is the best solution? So I believe that AI can, yeah, I, I said it in a keynote, demo, democratize, demo, democratize skills, um, making your human interaction more and more important. Um, and I think that, is going to be an interesting thing that also in our talent programs, we need to focus more and more on the human skills because that's the differentiator mm. in a future professional because AI will make more or less everybody a good designer or everybody a good, maybe not musician, but uh, <laughs> uh, at least everybody a good, maybe uh, AdWords campaign builder. Yeah. So that's going to be an interesting dynamic that, if, that maybe, although there's a lot of, skepticism in technology and AI that computers will take over. I think maybe for a future professional, the human skills are becoming more and more a differentiator between a successful professional, maybe a less successful professional. Yeah. Oh, it's definitely going to change our market. That's for sure. We already see that happening. And well, we have a whole, a whole team dedicated on it and what it means for, for our people, the work that we do, but also our clients. And, that brings me to another question. So what I typically, at least what we're very strict in is that uh, if you don't use ChatGPT or other tools in the right way and you upload your data, for example, then it might be out there, right? So it's like yeah. a big data leak. Um, what, what do you see like in terms of the partners that you use and the talent that you that you offer? Is that something you guide as well or that you can help them? Uh, what do you see that companies should do to adopt this? Um. I think there's no winning strategy at the moment. I know that a lot of consultancies say, consultancy companies say that they have this strategy to implement AI, but we have no clue. And if you maybe said, hey, we need to build automations, I think a while ago say, all right, the next thing is gonna be prompt writing. But if you see now a little bit how it's going, you don't need 
a very good prompt writing because Just AI will help you right create it. a great prompt. So Click a button. I think the only, v yeah, only advice that makes sense is start learning it and start experimenting on it because you have no clue how fast things are going. If you would say um, that, yeah, we need to build automations and now OpenAI launched a uh, agent tool itself but it was super easy hmm. all right now then probably in the next couple of months the, this 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 will further improve and so all the things that you can come up now at the moment that where it can make impact probably it will be changed in three months or um or weeks even hmm. so the only thing is what you can really do is try to get a grip on it and start to learning so i think in the domain that we are in, in talent development, we need to start experimenting on it. And as a company, you need to get people on board, or at least in your company, identify the people who are motivated about it mm -hmm. and let them experiment on it. Probably in your company, you have a few people who are intrinsically motivated about AI. Let them experiment and let them try things out because it's not optimal at the moment. Mm -hmm. uh, so you need to have the people who are saying, hey, it doesn't matter that it's not optimal or it's not perfect, I will try things out. And I think that's what you need to do as a company. You need to find the early adopters of it and then let give them the opportunity to experiment with it, do it in a safe environment. We also work with very large corporates and they're freakingly scared about <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. all the data breaches and then their natural reaction is, it's not allowed. I, and I then see I that think, happening too, yeah. I think that's really, really stupid. Um, but I, I at least you can it, say yeah. for the whole team, maybe skip ChatGPT for a while, but at least create some kind of a sandbox or create some kind of a um, test grounds where at least you can learn. Yeah, I think that's the way to go. So you, you don't want your data to be open out there. And uh, I think there's a switch somewhere in the back end of ChatGPT that you can uh, yeah, put on. Yeah, somewhere, and, but so <laughs> not sure so the if, they, the, if they will... Uh, well, that's always the question. Yeah. It's a large <laughs> enterprise and Microsoft's behind it. So, uh, <laughs> well, Facebook uh, said they would never use your WhatsApp data. Like, I don't believe these kind of things. So they, they will use your data anyways. So, but I think for big corporates, I understand the the, the risk, but that they should uh, do something with it. But um, so it's developing so super fast. So how do you keep up with it? So for, for the content that you're using in, in the courses that you give? Now, so what we defined is, so we, we started out with, and this is also now a little bit my role in the company, sorry, what is the future vision and what's the future of work? Mm. Um, um, now with the rise of AI. So what we said at the Talent Institute saying, right, in 2025 or beyond 2025, mm -hmm. we believe that every professional is leveraged by AI. Um, so they have some kind of a co-pilot next to them. Superpower. Uh, yeah, superpower. Um, so we try to identify what is that co-pilot role. And then, of course, you have maybe, uh, now you have a um, Microsoft co-pilot who helps you with writing an email. But I believe a co-pilot in your primary processes where you for where you are hired for in your role. So if you are a marketeer, AI is a co-pilot in your marketing task. If you are an innovation professional, AI is a co-pilot in your day-to-day uh, -day task. That's what we believe in. So as the talent industry, we say, hey, the professionals that we provide to companies, they need to be fully leveraged by AI, making them three times better than a person without. Now that's mm a future goal and I'm not sure how that will look like. And then we try to move it back to this year, right? What can we do this year to make at least learn um, and make steps towards that goal? So what we tried saying, hey, in our talent development, we say, all right, how can AI be a support there? So first of all, it starts with teaching everybody about AI, mm -hmm. um, just building up a case, writing prompts, uh, the general stuff, learning about large language models. Secondly, we said, all right, let's start applying it in the work that we do. So if we place a talent within a company, um, what kind of work are they doing currently and can AI help them with that? Test, iterate there, learn, 
Um, and we are doing also our projects now at clients to say, hey, we have a process within our company. Um, what can AI do for us? Now, then we place a young professional who is skilled in that on that project. And these are all steps towards that goal of AI leveraged talent. Um, mm. Where this journey is going to end, I have no clue. Um, but I believe that being active at the moment with it and trying things out will help us at least succeed or get somewhere. Um, and I think that's also what every company needs to do right now. Just ask yourself the question, how does AI will change my work in 12 months or 24 months and then re-engineer it back to right, what can I do today? Mm. Yeah, what I personally love as well is that it, it, it might even go way beyond your your work environment. Uh, because if uh, the, the, I like the, the co-working part, uh, the co-pilot part you're po talking about. And for example, my ChatGPT, Ch I you have all these chats and I just gave a chat a name and explain ChatGPT who he, she, or whatever needs to be. So I explain really like the personality. So then you can have a co-pilot for every, like I said, like a financial advisor, your fitness coach. You have a co-pilot for everything, actually, if you do it well. And then you can always like... Um, I sometimes give the example of a friend of mine. He's been dealing uh, autos, uh, buying and selling autos all his life. Uh, if I need advice for a car that I want to buy, I just give him a call and ask him, okay, I have this budget. Uh, these are the things that I'm typically looking for. What car do you recommend? Or can you buy, even, can you buy me one? Yeah. So that's an interesting, uh, that's how I see it as well. So I would blindly trust him. And I think in the future, maybe even you have your co-pilot saying, hey, you know, I'm looking for this mattress uh, just check out the top 10 at uh, whatever website and uh, uh, order it for me, the cheapest and the fastest delivered, and you don't even do that anymore. I think that, that might be a future that we're, that we're looking for, and as long as that, that uh, AI assistant, the co-pilot, knows exactly what he or she is doing, then I think it's an interesting uh, development uh, that we see. Now, and the thing is, we never had that mm. in the past. So if you, now you are using it for personal effectiveness or indeed replacing your friend in the car dealer <laughs> <laughs> maybe to a GPT that you can better trust than a car dealer <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but uh, no but this is going to be a, a switch in in the, your professional life because yeah. you have all those cheeky me, uh, cheeky things that AI will not replace your job but some someone uh, with AI skills will yeah, yeah. replace your job yeah but I do think it's true. Uh, if you don't try to start understanding it right now, or mm. as a company also being aware, right? Hey, what kind of people do we need in our company um, to help us in this journey of change? Um, and we did, for example, a lot of work in innovation with at large corporates. Mm. And beginning of this year, I defined saying, hey, maybe innovation is for the next 12 months, not really into exploring and validating new products and services. It's transforming your current business uh, with the possibilities of the technology of today, like AI. Mm. Because if you can save 20% of your cost um, due to AI, or you can change your whole customer care center, or you can optimize a business process, there's real growth uh, at a company. So I think there's a huge opportunity to cr innovate and create growth even in your existing business mm. nowadays than trying to see growth only in building new products and services. Um, and that's going to be an interesting time. So we did a lot of innovation work for large organizations and we see also a transition now more and more towards the core business. Mm. Saying, right, what can we change there? What can we adjust? Um, meaning also that normally people who were acting in the core business were not really innovative, not really having a change mindset. Mm. But you need to have people with an entrepreneurial mindset or a mindset of change in your current business as well, because it will change. Everybody knows that, or you see it changing. Um, so that's going to be an interesting dynamic for companies, changing your current business, staying relevant, uh, creating a positive impact was also putting pressure on your uh, uh, attraction of talent, but also from the outside world. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be just an uh, interesting time upcoming 
12 to 24 months um, with all those changes. I definitely agree. And and so our podcast is called Redefine Growth. How do you redefine the growth of the talents that you um, develop? Yeah, I think, so one of, I think maybe it's not redefining, it's maybe facilitating um, and supporting. So I don't think that young professionals who are now in young professional, on, on universities, really have to be redefined because they're already more or less living in a world of change and they're all intrinsically motivated to change the world for good. Um, so I think you only need to give them, at least from my perspective as a talent institute, we are focused on young professionals. We need to facilitate them in achieving their goals. Mm. So giving them a platform or a breathing ground um, where they can more or less succeed. So that's what we try to do saying, hey, if you join our programs, we give you an opportunity within a company where maybe your CV is saying that you're not fit for the role yet, but together with the development, together with all the support, we can help you facilitate. So I think companies need to redefine growth. Mm -hmm. And I do think that on the people side, on the young professionals, it's more facilitate growth or support growth or give trust. I think you also work with a lot of young people. Mm. The best thing you can do is give them trust and yeah. an opportunity and they will they will go. Yeah, one of the things I also heard you saying is that so that you see a lot of hap things happening online with the free content, etc. So one thing I think where you really differentiate yourselves from what's happening <clears> is, is, is what you said, providing it in the right order and I think that's uh, uh, and and guiding them in that process also allow them to to apply it, and I think that's a, a very valuable uh, thing that you do because by itself learn how to work, learn how to follow up on things, learn how to behave in an environment is by itself already a super valuable thing if they can get guidance from you in that first process if they come from university and might not have that working experience. I think that's already like a super valuable thing to do where it's... Uh... It is almost the most valuable thing, right? You also hire a lot of young people. Mm -hmm. I hired a lot of young people. The best indicator for success is how eager they are. Are they um, um, not scared to make mistakes? Are they just asking questions? And all these kind of things, you don't learn that on university, but I do think it's one of the biggest indicators if you're going to be successful. Do you mm -hmm. really want to learn? So... Learning how to work and learning how to more or less develop yourself. I think it's the most valuable skill, what we never been taught on schools or universities. Yeah. Um, because in the past, we were quite thought to fulfill a certain role for the rest of your career. You're going to be an accountant. You're going to be a marketeer. But the marketeer of today, you will not be the same marketeer um, in 20 years. Nope. Maybe you know, cookies, Facebook, maybe Facebook doesn't exist anymore. Uh, AdWords will change. AI will probably change the whole game of search engine optimization experts. So the th true thing that we need to start learning is to more or less learn mm. and work and try things out. But that's, um, that's a time where we are in right now mm. and... Also, educational systems are trying to change, but they're quite conservative and hard to change. Mm -hmm. So there's a big opportunity for businesses um, to really step into that gap uh, to help professionals and help companies with this challenge. Uh, what do you recommend companies to to do to facilitate that personal growth? Um, so, so for me, at Sprint Sneakers, we, we value learning a lot. And we try to facilitate it in all sorts of ways. Um, but still, you know, people, <clears throat> uh, sometimes they they prefer to like to finish some work for clients rather than invest that time in their personal development. And sometimes it's also quite, quite hard to motivate them to, to like, you don't have to read that book for, for me. Like it's, it's your personal development, right? What would you, what do you see are, are critical success factors for entrepreneurs or environments to create that learning environment, to really learn people how to learn what you're talking about? Yeah, that's a, very good question. I maybe again I can give you an example. There was one time a trainee 
and we provide them with an online learning platform where there are, I think, 85 courses, digital marketing courses on that uh, platform. And it was a uh, US-driven company, so it's from the US. Mm -hmm. And what he started doing during his traineeship, he started almost following every course. But he did that not in the evening hours. He did that during working time where he also worked for his traineeship company. Hmm. And a lot of his peers said, yeah, but you do this in your time that you need to work for the client um, or you need to work for your traineeship company. You need to build AdWords campaigns. And he explained it. Yeah, I do that. But if I learn, then they present me a framework or some tips and tricks and I start directly applying it for the company. Hmm. And the result was there. He followed up with, I think he still holds the record for most followed courses on the platform um, <laughs> there. He got all the certificates and he did an amazing job as his company because he applied all those knowledge directly towards the company. So I think what the advice that companies and professionals need to take into account is saying gaining that knowledge will directly impact your work as a professional. Um, so it's good to just start trying things out, right, for the first time and then understanding what you don't know. But your second step is don't start hitting that wall a thousand times because you don't understand. Start learning something and then start applying it mm. in your company. So I think that and most of the times the learning part and the applying part is too much dispatched from each other. And that's why people don't see the link that it helps each other. But if you as a company make sure that the things that they can learn is linked to the work that they're going to do, then both sides, the professional will see the value because they are better at their client work or their work. And the company will also see the value because they say, oh, holy fuck, you learned something and you applied it and now the, we have a happy client or we, uh, you did really well in your job. So the goal is start trying to connect the work and the learning to each uh, to each other because then you see the then you see the output and the value of the learning mm. and um, this is the example of this former trainee and he facilitated for years uh, um, and he was still an example and still every trainee said how did you do that 85 courses and yeah. every time he tells this story mm. and every time people say oh yeah that's clever um, and that company said every time to a guy who only was three months along the way in the traineeship, how do you know all this knowledge? And the only thing he was just copy pasting the knowledge of mm. and and marketing expert from the US towards his role yeah. by following that course. So I think that's, I think the best advice and example that I can give on how you can connect personal learning um, towards the work that you're doing and reserving time for that. I think that's a great advice. And it's also in line with uh, what you spoke about with the co-pilot of AI. So don't try to do things by yourself, but uh, find knowledge or a co-pilot or uh, gather others around you to uh, do it together with them because uh, then the output will be uh, probably better and you will get noticed as 100%. a talent uh, within an organization. Uh, Rodrik, we need to close off. Um, thank you so much for thank being you. here. I think this was super interesting. Uh, I'll drop some links uh, in uh, in the description of this uh, part. Uh, they'll probably can find you on uh, LinkedIn for all companies that are looking for talent. Uh, uh, Roderick's the guy uh, to go to. <laughs> They've got amazing talent at the Talent Institute. So uh, thanks again uh, for being here and uh, for the inspiring talk that we had. Thanks, Bart. Cheers. Thanks for listening, watching this Redefine Growth podcast. I hope you liked it. If you have any thoughts on who we should invite to the pod, please leave their names in the comments. There's more exciting stuff to come, so like and subscribe. And I hope to see you next time. Bye-bye.